Okay, this video is on how to cast a surf rod. Now, um, pardon the video here. Uh, I blew this up quite a bit from the original slow motion video, but that doesn't matter. You're going to get the fundamentals down. And uh, the, uh, the first thing I want to talk about uh, when you go to uh, start surf fishing is, is you want to select a surf rod, you know, that's not too stiff, okay? Uh, they may call that a fast rod, okay? So, uh, and I've got a video on that. If you check that out on, uh, you know, Pompano Fishing Surf Rods, you can watch that. And it talks about the terminology. So when you go to buy them in the store, you'll know what a fast rod is, okay? But uh, anyways, if you have a surf rod that's too stiff, it's not going to load up. And all we're really doing with a surf rod, in the case of these rods, my nephew Chris Gallagher is using these are 13 foot rods, and he's also using uh, conventional reels. Uh, let's let's start out by just watching this original video, and then we'll break it down into pieces. Okay, and you can see how it loads up if you watch that rod. He's probably using a four ounce sinker. Doesn't look like it's too wavy out there. And uh, anyways, if it, you you can see how the load on this, and if you had a surf rod that was too stiff. You know, the only way you're going to be able to load up the rod is uh, is to probably use a lot heavier sinker, which uh, is no fun dragging in every time. Uh, I know from experience when the rods I inherited from my dad were were pretty stiff. Chris used to, you know, call them broomsticks, and uh, there was good reason for that. So uh, let's uh, let's talk about something else now. We talked about surf rods. What I want you to pay attention now is uh, let's play it again and watch his feet. You know, watch Chris's feet. He's stepping right into it, you know. And in any sport, uh, football, baseball, anybody who knows anything about those sports, you have to use your body and you have to step into the pitch or step into the throw for football. And you can see Chris, he's taking his left foot here. He's uh, right-handed. And he is stepping right into it. And that, that is huge. You know, you're getting your the power, your, your legs into that, okay? His uh, right foot actually comes off the ground a little bit. So that's super important. You know, we, uh, we were having a good laugh on the beach last time we were out. We, uh, we uh, were talking about guys who walk out into the water almost up to their waist thinking, well, hey, I'm this much farther out. I'm going to have a farther cast. Well, that's just the opposite. You know, you, you can't use your body and your legs. If you're in waist-high water, you just can't do it. And not only that, all that salt water is splashing on your expensive, you know, reel. And, uh, you know, you'll ruin your equipment. You know, you'll just ruin it. So, and uh, while we're talking about reels, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that conventional reels will cast farther than spinners. Okay. And uh, you will get the occasional bird's nest. And what Chris suggests to do is, you know, start with three surf rods. Make sure they're at least 12 foot, preferably 13 foot. And if you have a way to get them to the beach, preferably single blank. Nothing you have to put together. You're going to have a, it's going to be a better performing rod if it's a single blank. That may require you to get a custom rod made, but worth every penny for distance. Um, and... Uh, Chris uh, says, you know, start with two spinners and one conventional and, and practice. And when you're good enough, you can switch entirely over to conventional. So uh, anyway, so uh, we've talked about rods. We've talked about using your body and stepping into the cast. And also talked about the, the real types, you know. And uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is super important. Let's watch this cast again. Now, you can see that... Chris's hands are pretty much level right now, and this is the number one mistake that amateur casters are going to make, okay? Now, let's watch as he goes through the cast. His hands stay pretty much level, and then what you're going to see is his left hand at the butt of the pole is going to drop down, okay? Which means that cast is relying on this hand to be the pivot, Okay, if for some reason you're using this hand as the pivot, well, that means you're using all arm and you just won't get any distance. You'll be lucky to cast 
75 yards, okay? And, and when Chris is casting, when anybody is casting a surf rod properly, not only are you using that, uh, that right hand as your pivot point, but you're going to be pulling down on the butt of that rod during the cast, okay? And you are going to get some incredible speed at the tip of that pole, and that's what it's all about. you got a 13-foot whip, okay? So concentrate when you are casting, pulling down with that left hand. And it's going to be awkward at first, but you'll realize how much distance you're going to get. And nobody can teach you when to let go. You know, if you, if you let go too early, you'll, you'll be a master of artillery and the sinker will go straight up in the air. That, that tells you, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're just letting go too early. And if you, you let go too late, it's going to be a, a, a missile going parallel to the ocean. You'll be lucky to go 50. So, but you'll work on that. That just takes practice. So, um, but that, that is key. That's the number one mistake that people make is not using the right pivot point you know you've, you've got to make sure that upper hand okay that is your pivot point and you're going to pull down on that rod for all that power you combine that with the right surf rod and the leg action and you've got yourself a hundred yard cast and in chris's case maybe 150 i don't know sometimes uh i think he used to call nasa before he cast just to get clearance but uh and that's it you know, that is uh, the proper way to cast. The other thing I would like to mention is, is you notice when Chris gets done with a cast, he doesn't keep going and let his surf rod go level to the deck. He keeps it pointed to the sky. And what that's going to do is, is there's going to be less friction on that line peeling out at 100 miles an hour on those upper eyelets. You know, if he were to continue on and put that surf rod down here, well, He's going to have a lot of tension on those upper eyelets. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you get a surf casting rod made for yourself, you can watch that surf rod uh, video I've got, Pompano uh, Surf Fishing Rod video, and it talks about the better quality of eyelets, too. But uh, that'll do it, you know. That's that's how to become uh, a better surf caster and and when you're going for Pompano, if you can't get a long distance cast, you're going to see people cutting, you know, next to you catching more, if, uh, especially if there's a sandbar or structure you're trying to get to. So, uh, so that's it, you know. I, I hope you learned uh, a lot. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe to the Pompano Brownie channel, and that'll do it for this video.